In this module, we are going to talk about middleware and startup. First, we will try to wrap our head around middleware. We will see how dependence injection is native to ASP.NET Core and how iApplication Builder object helps achieve that. We will see how we can use middleware to serve static files. We will then set up our exception handling middleware and then to finish off this action, we will see how we can do logging from the middleware. In this video, we are going to meet this new technique introduced in ASP.NET Core called middleware. This is how things will be done in ASP.NET Core and we must have the right understanding of it. Once mastered, it can help us tame and exercise full control over the HTTP request processing pipeline. First, let's see what we are replacing by this middleware. In the old style of ASP.NET request pipeline, when a user makes a request to the server, the server then queues the request to the application pool of the application. In IIS, w3wp.exe worker process runs the ASP.NET application and is responsible for managing the request and response from client. When a request arrives to the application, a series of events are generated. For example, the first event raised is called the begin request and then you have authenticate request that ensures the request is authenticated properly. The post authenticate event and then the authorized request and then you have many other requests until the last request pre-request handler execute is raised and then the process is reversed. Now the HTTP handler generates the output and raises post request handler execute event. Then it raises release request state, post release request state, log request and many other events and then ends with the last event end request. It was essential to know these orders of events to catch them in time to inspect the HTTP message. Many developers used to tap into these events for accomplishing many tasks. Logging is one of the popular ones. One could tap into the begin request and then tap into the end request and then calculate the time it took to accomplish the task of processing the request and returning the response and log that data somewhere. One of the biggest disadvantage of this process is that you have no control of what happens when. You must know the events orders beforehand or miss vital information in the process. The new .NET Core request processing pipeline has introduced middleware. If this is the first time you are seeing this and shouting out loud by saying middle what? Then fret not. It is not that mysterious even though the name itself might conjure up some fears in some of us. If you have any experience in c -sharp SP.NET programming before, then you will be alright. It is here to stay though and therefore we will invest a bit of time to get to know it. You have complete control over the request pipeline processing. Soon you will realize that what an amazing power you have been bestowed upon. Well. Beware that with great power comes great responsibility. In this slide, let's examine the middleware a bit more. First, let's say that we have an incoming request, which will be passed to the first middleware, which could be an exception handler. This will set up the exception handling and then pass along the control to the next piece of middleware, which could be an authorizer, which will check for proper authorization. If the request doesn't have proper authorization, then it could return with an error message or can redirect to the login page. Otherwise, the authorizer will pass the control to next middleware called the router. The router might get the correct resources and form the correct response and pass it along to the previous middleware. The current middleware now passes the message to the exception handler middleware. If an exception has happened previously, it can now either log it or display the correct message or redirect to an error page or the HTTP response message will simply be returned to the client. Alright, now we can see that a middleware is a step by step process, one middleware at a time. We really have full control over the lifecycle. That's amazing. Okay, enough with the theory. Let's see some code. 